Hello, good day, and welcome back to Coding with Veral. And today we'll continue with episode two in our series on Go modules and workspaces. So in this video, we're going to learn what a module is and some of its attributes. We'll learn things like the root path, the module part. We're going to mention the version, but not really do much with it just yet. And I'll show you some quirks in this video. And then in the next two videos, you'll see some other things that you together should give you enough information about how you might want to decide how to create your modules. So without further ado, let's jump in. So the first thing we're going to do is go read the Go module documentation. And here you'll see it says, um, this is documents a detailed reference manual for a Go module system. And if you scroll down a little bit, you see a module is a collection of packages that are released, versioned, and distributed together. And you really want to keep that in mind. A, pack, a module is just a set of packages. A module is defined by a module path, which is declared in a go.module file. Um, together with information about the module dependencies. We're going to ignore this last bit for now, but basically a module is defined by when you have this go.mod file. All right. The module root directory is the directory that contains the go.mod file. That's the module root directory. Now it says here about the main module, but I'm going to ignore that again for now. And I'm going to go on each module within a mod each package within a module is a collection of source files in the same directory that are compiled together that's what a package is if you take a set of go files and you compile it together it becomes a package and they must be in the same directory a package path is therefore the module path joined with the subdirectory containing the package now you're going to see um there's some nuance here about the subdirectory for a package. And that's what we're going to focus on in this video and then the next two. Now, when it comes to module path, what is the module path? The module path is the canonical name for a module declared with module directive in the module go that file. We're going to see that later. A module path is a prefix for packages path within the module. Okay, we know that makes sense because there are a number of packages within a module. Then it says the module root, which we mentioned before, which contains the go mod file, is the portion of the module path that corresponds to the root directory of the version control system where the module is deployed. Well, I would say probably stored or saved, something like that, or version. Most modules are defined in their root directory, which means since the go that mod file defines the module, most module the go that mod file is in the repository root directory, but this is not always the case. So for example, you have go.lang.org, which is the domain. Then you can imagine X is some username. And then the repository name is net. And within there, the go that module file is stored there. So in this case, the go that the module is defined in the repository. But in other cases, if the module is not defined in the root directory, the module subdirectory is the part of the module that names the directory, not including the major version. Well, this other part with the version, we'll have to revisit this. But basically, if you have a repository directory and the good at mod file is not in that repository root, then they're just saying that the module is in that subdirectory that contains the go.mod file. So essentially wherever the go.mod file is, that's where the module root is. So let's back up a little bit and look at some pictures. So what is a module? Well, like it says, a module is a set of packages. But before that, let's go back and make sure that we're on the same page. Go source code is always placed into one or more Go files. And then a collection of those Go files within the same directory share the same package and that becomes a go package and they're compiled together then if you have multiple packages well you can even have one package right but one or more go packages forms a module and how do you know you have a module when you have a directory with that go that mod file 
that's it you do not have to go back and change anything about the source code to create a go module the source code just says the package and that's it all right so let's now go take a look at our module path let's create, say for example i've created a repository in my virtual control system called awesome now the url where you can find my repository let's say it's sc for source control that me let's say that's my domain it is not but let's just say for the sake of this example that's my domain name. Like I own that do domain in SC, that me. Now, when I put my version control software there, host it there, I can then create a directory to represent my different users. So let's say Veril is a user on my own version control system or some other version control system hosted by someone else, okay? So that's me, Veril. So now, since I might want to create multiple projects, sure enough, I can have a repository for each. So in this case, I'll have a repository called awesome. So the full URL to where my repository is in terms of source control is going to be sc.me forward slash vero slash awesome. That's my repository name. So let's do show and tell. I'm going to go show you. I'm going to create a repository for the user vero and make sure we're on the same page about what I'm doing. You don't have to have a um, version control system that you can do this with, but I'm gonna do it anyway and show you. So let's do it. And what I'm gonna do is add a repository. I'm gonna give it the rather clever name, awesome, like we said. And notice this repository I'm creating, awesome, is for the user vero or owner in this case. I'm not gonna set anything else. I'm just gonna say create repository. And you don't need to worry about what it's doing. It's basically a Git repository, that's all it is. A place where you can store get use git to do version control now for the purpose of this video i'm going to copy this url so i can then clone this repository from the server which is actually running locally on my desktop um that's why it has local host and a port number but i'm going to copy that and go to my directory and clone it now you can imagine if i had this hosted somewhere else it wouldn't be local host port 2200 it would be sc that ME or whatever domain name. So now when I clone this to my desk, um, my laptop, you can see it says, hey, um, you clone an empty repository, but that doesn't matter. I can then change into this directory and it's going to be empty. There's nothing in there. Now I'm going to start my Chromium so that oh, we can start working from here. So let's go back to our slides. So now that we have a repo, we want to create a module within this repo repository. So again, to create a module, we just have to create a file called go.mod. And in that file, we have to say the module keyword directory. We have to give the module its name. So now that I have my repository available on my local system, let's go create our module. So again, creating a module is just simply a matter of creating a go.mod file. And this immediately, once I create a module file with the module name in it, this means that my module name in this example is called thing and the module path is going to be that repository path with is, you know, sc.me.veril forward slash awesome. And then the name of my module, which is called thing. So that's the full module path. So let's go do this in code. So if I go back to Chromium or whatever editor you're using, I can then create this file go.mod. And I can do that by hand. And this is going to actually give me a Go module. I don't need to do anything else. Go is going to take it from here and keep me adding stuff to it. All I need to do is create go.mod, give it, use the module directive. And then the value after the module directive is going to be my module name. And in this case, it's going to be that module path, which I showed you just now, which is going to be my version control, host and repository path. So it's going to be my repository path followed by the name of what I want to give my module, which in this case is thing. The other way I can do this is from the command line using the go mod command. And so if I use go mod and I do in it and I say sc.me forward slash feral forward slash awesome forward slash thing, which is exactly what I want it to be. Now, when I press enter, it creates the go.mod file for me. And if we were to click on that file and look at the content, it looks pretty much exactly like what I created by hand, except 
is a one extra entry on line three, which is my Go version. And again, you don't have to put this in if you create the module file by hand, but Go will eventually add it for you. So what I'm gonna do is just for kicks and giggles, I'm gonna add this value to a version control, check it in, and then push it back up to my server. And that's just to show you that once I have a repo, there's nothing special about it. It's just a regular version control repo, and I can put files in it, and it just happened to be that's all I can put this go.module file, and this is what Go uses my repo and the fact that this go.module file is here to say that oh, this is the module path. And that's it. Now, let's go back to our slides so we can talk about adding a package to our module. I'm gonna explain the whole dotted line situation that I'm using for like the module, and then now you're gonna see me use the same thing for the package. So to create a package in my module, I simply just have to add the source code file, right? And the go source code file, we know that in each source file is a package name. And within any directory, which is this directory that my repository is in, I have to use the same package name. And so by adding go file with a package name, I create a package. And so in this case, what I'm saying is these two go files or only go files I have sharing the same package name means that they're in the same package. And let's say we call this package A. So let's create this. And so I'll create two files. Again, one I'll just call the very creative name, package a-1.go. And of course I have to say package because that's the keyword that's required in every Go file that must be in a package. And this is how you say that this file is in a package by declaring the first line to be you know, the package name. And I'm gonna say, well, in this package A, we have some value with the number 42. And then I'll create another file within the same package, package A, that uses that value. Um, for, that is declared in a package. And of course this is internal, so I'm not gonna get into all that. The full function is exported, but the value is not. But that doesn't matter, you know all this stuff already. So all that happened is full logs a message when it's called, and of course the value that um, we have. I wanna show you that, yes, the go file and the mod file are sitting side by side as siblings. The question mark you see there is because of my command line and all this other stuff. It's not rendered properly within VS Code, but other than that, it's the same. Now, what is our package name? Well, it's package A, of course, but how do we use the things in package A? This is where it gets interesting. If you remember what it says in the documentation that a package name is the module name followed by the actual package name. But in this case, you will see the package name, well, it's A, but when you go to use it, you can't prepend the module name. And so for us to test it, let's just create a main.go file. Since we want a main.go to run our um, test our uh, foo function, well, I have to put it in the main package and we can have two packages in the same directory. So that means main.go have to go into a different directory instead of the directory with the other go files. And so there you have it. And notice when I import package A, it actually says import as A and it renamed it from the module. Sort of weird, right? Well, this works. But what happened if I actually remove A to say, let's just import thing, and I'll just say, since I'm important thing, I'll just say thing that foo. And notice this is wrong. This, this is an error, why? Because there's nothing called, there's no package called thing. There's a module called thing, but not a package called thing. And this might be confusing, so you should take some time, spend looking at this, playing with it, do it yourself, make sure you understand this. So in this very specific case, the documentation when it says that the package name is, or the full, full package name is the module name followed by the name of the package. In, in this example, when we put the Go files in the roots of the module, that's not the case. We have this sort of weird thing where, you know, hey, you can import it as A alias to the module, but you cannot use the module name 
to access any of those things in the um, package. And it gets a little bit weirder than this, which you're going to see in the next video. I wanted to keep this short. This is a lot of information. And I want to make sure you understand it since I decided to cover it again. Uh, I want to cover, cover some of the nuance. I'm not going to be able to cover everything, but you can see at the pace at which I'm going, this is probably going to take forever if I were to do the whole thing this way. So we're going to pick up the pace a little bit, but at least to get you started, I want to make sure I walk through this with you. And the next two videos are going to be kind of slow also. Um, try this out. Let me know what you think and leave comments. If you've watched to the end of the video, um, I'm asking you now, do you like this material? Are you a subscriber? If the answer is no to not being a subscriber and yes, that you like the material, why wouldn't you subscribe? I would love to have you as a subscriber. Thank you. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for coming back, being patient. I pr absolutely appreciate it. Absolutely appreciate it. Couldn't thank you enough. Um, take care. See you in the next video. Bye.